Welcome back to Manic Mods. If you're looking to build or improve your e-bike, I'm hoping this video will give you some inspiration and ideas. I'll give you an overview of my bike, a review of all the components on it, and anything I don't like becomes a Manic Mod I detail herein. This bike was electrified last year. It's a 2017 Jamis DXT Sport with a 19 inch frame. With disc brakes and plenty of space for the triangle battery, it lent itself well to the conversion. The bike in original form weighs a hefty 32 pounds, which the kit doubled. Still, with about two horsepower, it's got a better power to weight ratio than a Toyota Prius. I considered mid-drive motors, but they're generally smaller and less powerful. While you can change gears to help compensate, the larger hubs generate insane power at any RPM. Since it does not use a chain, it's also a redundant drive system in case your chain fails. This kit retails for about $300 on Amazon and gives you most of what you need to electrify most bicycles. Included is obviously the 1500 watt rear motor with a 26 inch tire and seven speed sprocket, a well-built speed controller with a number of features such as a six pin throttle network, seven connector motor interface, an output for an LED light, which runs at 48 volts and is switched, street legal bypass, which doubles output to 1500 watt when disconnected, as well as a pass or pedal assist system and brake lever cutoff. This kit also came with the brake levers and the pass sensor. You'll notice I did not use these parts. I've been thinking about adding the pass, which would automatically throttle the motor based on my pedal speed. I didn't use the brake levers because my gear selectors are built into my original ones. I thought it might be dangerous without the brake cutoff, but the largest safety issue is from the included twist throttle. I'll build on that later when I replace it in this video. Finally, the kit also includes this electronics bag, though I used another to fit the controller. I highly recommend you supplement this kit with torque arms. These help reinforce the connection between your bike and the motor. Depending on your bike, you may have to use the included pipe clamps. I was able to arrange and drill through them to bolt directly to my frame. I chose this Cowell 48 volt battery. It's got 20 amp hours and cost about $400. This battery is a beast. Last year, I put 40 miles on it before needing a charge. It towed my kids effortlessly in a trailer I wish I still had. And I've even built a small rolling cart for it and added a 1000 watt inverter to serve as a small AC power station. Other accessories I've installed is this bike seat, which is super comfortable. It has an oversized memory foam cushion and shock absorber. It's made by AO Lander, although I'm partly convinced it's pronounced a hole Lander. The seat costs $24 and is essential if you have diminished gluteal syndrome like Hank Hill. I use this X5 tail light made by Malian. A handlebar remote allows you to wirelessly control its lighting functions, which include turn signals. It has a five to 10 hour battery life, just went on sale for $36. And if that's not enough, it's got freaking laser beams. The exhaust GPS speedometer and odometer spared me and my bike from more wiring and cost only $29. It has Bluetooth functionality to sync your trip data to a mobile device, a backlit display, and cardio functions when using a heart rate monitor. Finally, my Tanzarin headlight runs about $40 and has 4,000 lumens, making them one of the brightest options. It has an external 8.4 volt battery with six to eight hours battery life. There are some things I didn't like about the bike and I spent the last few days on suitable mods for them. I'm definitely a fan of this battery, but I'm not a fan of the mounting method and I wish it had come with elastic Velcro. I was going to upgrade them, but picked up this triangle battery instead. This Bushwhacker was the perfect size and cost only $18. It was not intended for a battery, but its side zipper is large enough to slide one in. The same zipper also gives you access to check your battery supply and another zipper helps you store a few more items. I wouldn't be able to charge the battery or access its switch without removing it, so I cut an access hole. I reinforced this hole by hand sewing with a back stitch, then used a lighter to further ensure the nylon doesn't tear. I sewed a cover flap on that I repurposed from an old camera lens case. I don't sew, but I do like a challenge and found it relaxing and rewarding. This mod took just over an hour to complete. This bag has no bottom mounting hoops, so I used three brackets from Home Depot to make a cradle. I dry fitted the pieces together to determine the width and the depth of the bag. Then I marked and drilled the cup holder mounting points for the best stability. After I was done, I proceeded to give it the worst spray paint job I've ever done. Apparently I was missing the diffuser to the spray can. I sanded the blobs out and I could have bought a new can for the final coat, but vinyl wrapped it instead. And here we have the finished result. Super secure, mounted to the frame, a little more discreet, still have room for my cup holder. And I've got my access bay, put a little piece of Velcro right there for uh, my switch and my charging port. While I wish I had rear suspension, it's not really possible with the triangle battery the way soft tails are manufactured. I've seen a few examples of this battery strapped to a seat mounted rack. Given the center of gravity and weight distribution, it's probably a bit dangerous unless you're intending to do wheelies. 
To give some relief to my bike and ass, I dropped $30 on this DJC suspension seat post. This was an easy upgrade, all things considered. I removed my seat mount that I used to hold my electronics bag. Then I unlocked my seat post and slid it out before swapping my seat onto it. I added back my electronics mount before locking the new post in. All right, I do have that seat post installed. I can feel that suspension working. I'm hoping that with my seat, which also has suspension, I have a nice comfy ride. And if I don't, hey, I've got these uh, these biking boxers that my wife guaranteed that I'll fucking hate. So we could try those on too, but not on camera. When looking for hub motors, 26 inch is a common limitation of size. This Jamis came with 27 inch tires, which left the front unmatched. The size difference was upsetting, and when I blew my tire on the last ride, I knew it was perfect time to replace it. I had forgotten how expensive bike tires are. I ended up buying this 26 inch Shimano wheel with disc brake on eBay. The tire on it was shot, so I replaced the tube and tire. If you didn't notice, I replaced my rear wheel to match. This was definitely not as easy as the front. I had to disconnect the motor cable from the speed controller. I ran this wire back down to the motor. The cable is zip tied tightly to my frame to avoid the disc brake. It's a bit of a tight fit. Okay, it's a very tight fit, but so far so good. After the cable was loose, I loosened the wheel and removed my torque arms. I added the same Bell self-sealing tube and Schwinn mountain bike tire. I cursed plenty at my brand new GoPro oh, because it was overheating after 20 minutes of operation. I can't rely on that. Do me a favor and drop me a comment if you'd like me to build a video around my first few weeks with it. Here's the bike with matching tires. I think it looks a lot better. I'm just under six foot and hoping it's still an ergonomic ride. When I look at sizing charts, 26 inch tires are best suited for riders under five foot nine. My Jamis has a large 19 inch frame, so I'm hoping this compensates. Twist throttle that came with the Voilimart seems to be of good quality. My problem with it is safety because when I'm maneuvering, I want to twist that throttle. When I looked on Amazon, I found this T-Best controller that uses only a third of the grip for throttle. The keyed ignition made the decision easier and I purchased for $17. I'll note that the build quality does not look as good as it does on their product page. Under the display cover, I could see protective film still on the screen. T-Best does suggest, however, that photos may be different and please be kind prevail, whatever that means. Since the Voilamark comes with a six pin throttle cable and this was a five pin, I did have to make an adapter for it. I cut off the end of the original twist throttle and crimped on a more common female six pin connector. I crimped on a six pin male connector to the original throttle cable to ensure I could still use it and then the same male connector onto my new five pin throttle. This allows me to go back and forth between them if I wanted or prepare me for another of either variety. After studying the Voilamar and T-Best schematics, I did some testing and arrived at this conversion table. All right, I do have the new throttle controller installed. One thing I did do is I shortened the key, which I found a little bit obtrusive. I cut off the end of the key and then I threaded it on this wire nut right here. So it's a little smaller and gives it kind of a unique touch. And you can see 51.8 volts. Um, the partial throttle should keep me safer. What I'll be doing is I'll be measuring this throttle under load, so I should see that battery drop, and I'll get a feeling for when that battery is actually depleted over time. Uh, one thing I definitely don't like is that I uh, had to bring up my shifter console here, so I could actually shift lower gears, and now I have to go over this. So this is definitely not a keeper, but I uh, had to keep the project going, and I gotta show you the good or the bad, and you can learn from this. Um, this cable run is very similar. I have a Velcro tie here bringing that wire up and then around my gear selector and it shoots left along the brake and then goes all the way back to my controller. I hope to take this bike on a road trip soon, but I have very little storage outside the backpack I'll have. Before I considered this, I was already looking to add a new phone mount. Naturally, I bought one before deciding this Rock Bros phone bag would be double purpose. Installed, it offers a protective spot for my phone as well as a small maintenance kit. I've also ran a USB extension to the bag so I can conveniently charge my phone, GPS speedometer, or GoPro from it. If you go this route, I highly recommend a right angle connector to your battery so you don't damage the port if bumped. I've also tucked my headlight battery in there. I definitely did not like it between my other battery and frame. This Tanzarin light is rated at 4000 lumens, making it one of the brightest lights in the market. The downside is it runs at 8.4 volts. Because the headlight output at the speed controller is 48 volts, I'm still choosing to power this separately. I do have this buck converter that would allow me to step down the voltage if I decide to hardwire. 
I also picked up this 2000 lumen 48 volt Zramo headlamp in case I want to skip the buck converter. I like the thought of a single power source and don't believe it would take too much runtime away from the motor. I could also attach it to my front fork for a more polished look. But in my testing, my existing headlight had a brighter and wider light output. And at the end of the day, I thought I'd be best with a discrete battery and brighter output. Let me know if you want to see me hardwire headlight because I can't stop thinking about this route and there are more options including this front and rear lighting kit. All right, fam, that's gonna do it today. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions about the build, please let me know below. I'm a new content creator on YouTube, so if you know anyone that might benefit from the video, please share along. Next month, I'll be taking this vehicle on a road trip. I'll be bringing all my gear with me and hope to see you there. In the meantime, if you like the content, like the content, and if you wanna see more of it, you know what to do. Mm -hmm.